Okay, I'm gonna say that last night, the frogs at this state park were chirping like I've never heard frogs chirping before. We are at Oscar Scherer State Park here in Venice. Venice, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me do that again. Well, I guess I'm joining the Blackstone family. We got a little problem. Nikki has evidently picked up some chewing gum in her foot and she is not a happy camper. She ran out and left me and Nikki in her dust. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chuck. And I'm Allie. And we are Allie Chuck Adventures. And this week, we are at Oscar Shearer State Park in Venice, Florida. If you are new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification so you can follow us on our journey. So here at Oscar Shearer Campground, I'll say one thing, uh, we absolutely are falling in love with this campground. The privacy between sites is second to none. It, uh, you barely can look through your site and see uh, the next RV, which is uh, pretty cool. I mean, we like that. So uh, this weekend we're actually co-camping with some friends. We're camping with the Stevensons, Jamie and Sharon. Yeah. So if you guys seen last week's video, you'll know that we boondocked overnight again at uh, Sharon and Jamie's house in Fort Myers as we were evacuating the Keys because of Hurricane Elsa. Right. So, yeah, we uh, we'd already had this actually planned anyway. It was really nice. Uh, we got here just after Jamie got here. Sharon got here a little later on that night. We, uh, we cooked some chicken, we grilled some chicken on the old grill and had some salad. Played a few played, card games. Yeah, played some card games. <laughs> Taught Rummy to Jamie. So then we went over to their rig on Saturday for breakfast, and uh, they had the Blackstone Grill, which Chuck was uh, a little jealous about. <laughs> and uh, we had bacon and eggs and toast and... Uh, the eggs were free-range eggs from Texas. That's right. And we ended up having a nice breakfast with them and then came back to our RV, got ready to go hiking and we hiked the Lester Finley Trail here at the campground. Neat thing we learned about the Lester Finley Trail was Lester, I guess, was a young man who, and I may have this story a little wrong, but basically I think he lost his legs in an accident. One thing about Lester Finley, he was a young volunteer who lost his sight. Then he lost his life to a hit and run driver. But Lester left a wish, a trail that anyone, no matter what their abilities, could enjoy. His parents brought this wish and a memorial fund to the park manager. And he decided that he wanted to have a trail that could be handicap accessible. So the trail is like all paved and wide open. So if you're in a wheelchair, it's a it's wheelchair accessible. And it's a nice little trail. It's like five tenths of a mile yep. um, out and back. So not quite a mile total. I think when I was using my watch to, to track the hike, I think the whole hike itself was only like uh, about six tenths of a mile, honestly. So on the Luster Trail, there's actually a couple butterfly gardens, and uh, they had it all set up really cute, but we didn't see any butterflies, unfortunately. No. Um, but there were a lot of beautiful um, plants, and just it's just such a gorgeous trail. All the Spanish moss hanging from the trees. Oh, just so pretty. That's one thing out here about this place is there are a lot of trails. Well, this is very interesting here. This is just right near our campsite, and it talks about the American bald eagle, and there's eagle's nests over here so I guess they migrate north in May and they don't return until September so that definitely makes us want to come back here during the fall and in winter months you can see a eagle's nest over there in that tree how cool it would be to see an eagle a bald eagle right here and here we are as we're walking wow. right above me there is one of the eagle's nests right up there After we got done hiking the Lester Finley Trail, we did go over to where the canoe and boat launch is, and we uh, checked that out. We actually thought about airing up the paddle boards this time and, and, and going out. Uh, I was a little concerned about paddle boarding with Nikki here and these waters with potential for, good potential for gators. So we just decided it was really hot. Let's, uh, let's just skip the paddle boarding this weekend. 
But uh, Jamie and Sharon did go out on their kayak Saturday, or it was the early sun, early Sunday morning, yeah. and they said it was a really nice little paddle. But uh, we're just going to save that for probably when we come back in the fall. And it's a little bit uh, a little nicer weather. After the hike, we decided to go to Publix and get all the fixings for Chuck's famous foil packets. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, he decided to make the barbecue chicken and. Uh, we had some friends join us later that evening. Fran and Christian came out and we had dinner and we decided to go over to the Stevenson's um, RV because they have more space set up for playing card games and so forth. And we ended up learning a new game called Left Right Center with dice and oh, it was fun. <laughs> when we finally got Allie out of bed on Sunday <laughs> afternoon, eh, I mean, she was up probably by 11 a.m., but. <laughs> by 11 a.m. By 11 a.m. At least by 11 a.m. She was back awake. We uh, we loaded up the truck and all of us went down to check out the town of Venice and never really explored Venice. It was a cute little town, I have to say. Lot of beautiful homes in Venice mm -hmm. and um, we definitely want to go back and check out the town more in depth next time yeah but we decided to go to a dog beach called Brohard Paw yeah. Park Beach I have to say it very slowly it's a yes, tongue twister for me it is we are here at Venice in Venice and we are taking Nikki to a dog beach oh, this is nice Nikki it's like this is like Fort DeSoto mm. that sand is hot um, oh my gosh, Nikki awesome. had a ball. There were so many dogs out there off a the leash and Nikki just felt free to run and play with them. And um, I was a worried dad. I was like, Nikki, no, okay, you're having fun. Yeah, <laughs> well, she had such a good time. And So if you're in the area and you have a, a fur baby that likes the beach, definitely check out that, that park. Cause they had the double gates entering, uh, two of them, two sets of double gates, so your dog can't really escape. Right. We and saw we this, saw a dog that tried to escape. Yeah, we saw this one dog. It was River. a sweet golden retriever. And we saw him when he entered the beach. He was running around in circles like, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And next thing I know, we're He's, walking down the sidewalk. And he comes barreling by us. I'm like, uh, <laughs> are you supposed to? Uh, and then I hear people yelling, River. River. I'm like, I'm assuming that's River. River. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was trying to make a run for it. And then just like as you know we always look for historical places in the town that we're at and um, I looked up some historical places there and we saw the train depot. Um, we decided to check it out and it was really cool. They actually had the Barnum and Bailey Circus train that would travel um, in that area and they had a couple cars set up that you could look inside and not go inside but you could peek through but you could tell they had it set up for possible field trips and things like that. So I just took a shower and I thought I would touch on something that we have started doing for the last three trips in Aquila. And that is, instead of just hooking up city water and running city water and worrying about pressures and pressure regulators and all that, when we get to the campsite, we fill our freshwater tank, which holds 75 gallons of water, fresh water. And I learned this from another RV channel where he was talking about if you're worrying about pressures and you know the pressure in your lines of your RV, use your pump because that is made with the right pressure in mind for your rig. Well, there's been so many times we've been camping where either the pressure is really high and we have to use the pressure regulator or the pressure most of the times is very low and we don't have very good water pressure like for taking showers. So we started trying this like three trips ago and I have to say, I think this is the way we're gonna go from now on. We just, when the water gets a little low, I refill the tank outside, but now we're getting consistent water pressure with our showers. It's always the same consistent water pressure at the sink here in the kitchen. So yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else out there has done this sort of thing or has tried this other than when you're boondocking, but it's something that we're gonna continue doing even when we have the full water hookups at campgrounds. And uh, it's working out great for us. So if you've never tried that, you might wanna try it. Especially if you are like us and you've had issues where you've been at campgrounds and 
the water pressure is very low. Anybody else out there has tried this, you know, drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you think with using your water in your freshwater tank compared to using just the city water hookups at campgrounds. And I have to say that it's actually worked out very well at this campground because our water hose, as you can see here, is stretched as tight as it can go. Uh, I could not go up through the underneath part of the wet bay here and leave it hooked up. That's probably why I'm going to have to get a second hose like we used to carry a second hose for extensions. Never, hardly ever, ever had to use it, but, but in this case we could have used it here. But I was able to hook it up and fill up our fresh water tank and uh, that'll probably last us for the three or four days that we're here. We're going to go over and enjoy some lunch with the Stevensons and we're going to hike some of the trails here at Oscar Scherer State Park and see what all this park has to offer. How's it going? Good. Oh, that smells marvelous. You want to go any cool off? <laughs> so I think Allie and I have decided we're going to get a black sun grill. Maybe not one as fancy as this. So at this point, I was really in Blackstone grill envy. And then Jamie was cooking breakfast and he was doing the scrambled eggs and he was doing the bacon. And I was like, oh man, this, this, this food turned out so good, you know, and I love, I love the, love the concept of it. And I said to Allie, I said, can I get a Blackstone grill? And she was like, okay. Yeah, it'll benefit me too, because I get to eat his yummy food. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Walmart. They had a few in stock. I picked up one. Okay, so the box is a little messed up, but I did pick up me a 17 inch Blackstone griddle and I'm joining the Blackstone family. So I guess the plan next week, uh, while I'm in, you know, in between work, I'm going to be taking the old grill out of our RV, which I've said before, it's not a terrible grill. It's good for burgers and stuff, but it's not, it doesn't cook very evenly. So since I've got this, I'm going to take it out. The Blackstone fits perfectly on top of the slide out grill that's there now. So I'm going to make that into a drawer to keep like some utensils in and, and such and so on. And then when I'm done with the Blackstone, it literally fits right up into the cubby above where it slides in perfectly and it's it's just going to ride there. So I'm pretty happy with it. I've already cooked bacon, I've cooked pancakes, I've cooked hamburgers, I've cooked uh, like hibachi style peppers and we're going to have salmon tonight. So Chuck is so in love with his Blackstone Grill that we decided to go back to Publix today and get a couple more things for him to enjoy cooking on the grill. and. We got some keto pancake waffle mix and it was really good. Birch Benders Micro Pancakery and it's keto. It's five grams of net carbs. And a lot of times when you get keto things to try, sometimes they can be a little dry and grainy tasting, but this was actually really good. So if you are looking for a good keto mix for pancakes, this is definitely a good one to try. It's very fluffy. We'll add this to our Amazon store down below. So a little trick when you're making corn on the cob, or roast ears as I call it. I prefer just to microwave it. I microwave two to three ears for about seven to eight minutes. When it's done, pull it out, it's hot. Use a towel, cut the end off like so, and squeeze, squeeze it out like tube of toothpaste. Squeeze it out like a tube of toothpaste. No hair left on the corn, it's all in the thing. It's clean, it's easy. Oh, look at that. Yep. Easy peasy. Yep. Watch one more time. I gotta do it one more time. For those of you who missed it the first time, cut the end off. I cooked three ears of corn in our microwave this time for eight minutes, and it just it don't get any easier than that right there. That's the best way to do it. Butter, salt, good to go. Well, we cooked our first steaks on our new Blackstone griddle. Is that what you call it? Griddle? Griddle? Blackstone yep. griddle? Griddle. 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 Yep. griddle. <laughs> there they are. And having uh, our last dinner with the Stevensons before they head out early in the morning before we're awake, probably. <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say that last night the frogs at this state park were chirping like I've never heard frogs chirping before, so apparently. There's a lot of frogs here and 
I had to take Nikki out at three o'clock in the morning and all these frogs chirping, I was scared out of my wits. So I'll just say that I have a strong phobia of frogs. Anybody who knows me personally knows that I am definitely afraid of frogs. So originally we had paid for all the way through Tuesday morning. We were gonna leave here Monday evening because Allie's got uh, some appointments in the morning on Tuesday. But I talked her into just getting up early on Tuesday morning and we'll head out. We were just enjoying this park so much here. It's uh, There's so much wildlife with the rabbits. I haven't never seen so many rabbits. Uh, I know, uh, right? There's more rabbits than I've seen squirrels, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Earlier we were sitting and watching TV and I happened to look over at the sofa and Nikki was sitting there biting on her feet. And I looked over and I'm like, what's going on? And we looked at her, she had gum stuck in her paw. Poor thing was shaking and so we tried to get it out. We don't even have a pair of scissors here in the RV, so we had to get some scissors, scissors while we were there at Publix as well. Um, but we got it. We did. Poor and she's thing. happy now. She is. Are you a happy girl now? <laughs> she's getting ready to go do some more hiking, aren't you? So here's the trail map that they actually give you um, when you go to the front office. And um, it's really nice that they actually have a specific map trail. Yeah, just for a lot the trails. Of yeah, a lot of times when you go to state parks, they'll give you... Uh, the just whole overview, overview. Um, but this shows the Lester Finley Trail. This is the ranger station, and this is what we did yesterday. Um, this is what we're going to check out now, which is the South Creek Nature Trail. It goes right by South Creek. All right, so we are hiking the South Creek Trail. Well, we're trying to hike the South Creek Trail because Nikki's making it a little bit more difficult than it should be because she wants to smell every leaf and every piece of grass that she can. Uh, That's what you do. It's kind of cool. They have these little markers along the trail here. This is uh, number two. Don't know, Don't know what it means, but uh, we just passed number one. They have arrows pointing. And they also have alligator warning signs. on putting bug spray on me just because of ticks and stuff and I forgot and I should have because it was what the deeper we got into the trail the more mosquitoish it was becoming and I just couldn't finish I was getting eaten alive so yep you had to come back she had to ran out she ran out and left me and Nikki in her dust <laughs> oh I didn't get bit once so I don't have the kind of blood that they like apparently so looking at the campground map here they have 98 sites here and it Sites 70 through 90, I believe, are not pet friendly because of being so close to the water and probably because of the alligators. It's quite a large campground. Mm -hmm. 